Ubuntu is a Linux distribution based on Debian and is mostly composed of free and open source software. Ubuntu is officially released in three editions, desktop, server, and core for Internet of Things devices and robots. All of the editions can run on a computer alone or on a virtual machine. If you already have a platform with Ubuntu installed, you can skip to the OpenSAT kit installation step. A virtual machine allows one operating system to run as a guest on a host operating system. A hypervisor is a virtual machine manager. For this tutorial, Windows 10 will be the host operating system and Ubuntu will be the guest operating system. I'll be using Oracle's VirtualBox as the hypervisor since it is freely available and supports many platforms. I'm now going to install VirtualBox. I'm at virtualbox.org wiki slash downloads. I selected the Windows host and started the download. The installation process is pretty straightforward with the default selections being adequate. I've accepted the warning about the network being temporarily disabled and I've accepted the installation of Oracle's USB driver. After VirtualBox is launched, it's prompting me to install extensions, which I've accepted. As you'll see, VirtualBox will list some existing VMs I have on my host computer. We won't be using these. We'll be creating a new VM. Now that we've installed VirtualBox, we're going to need to get a copy of Ubuntu to use for our virtual machine. The most current version of Ubuntu at the time of this recording is 20.04.1. However, I'm going to install desktop Ubuntu 18.04.5 LTS. The LTS stands for long-term support. I'm doing this because the Cosmos installation fails with Ubuntu 20. I've provided details on the OpenSAT Kit Wiki homepage in the installation section on why this is the case. So I'm at the URL releases.ubuntu.com slash bionic, which is the name they've given to this release, Bionic Beaver. I'm going to select the desktop image and start the download. This takes a long time, so now that I've started it, I wanted to make you aware of another point. That um, when we set up the virtual machine, we're going to need to set up the memory and hard disk space requirements. And that previous release page didn't specify any of that. So I've now clicked over to the main release page of Ubuntu, which is the 20.04 release. And here they have recommended system requirements. So we're going to use these requirements when we set up the RAM and the hard disk drive for our virtual machine. We now have VirtualBox installed in an Ubuntu disk image. So we're ready to create our virtual machine and initialize Ubuntu. So we go to the new icon. And if we put something like Ubuntu in our name, notice that the, the type turns into Linux. So it's smart enough to do that. So we're going to name our VirtualBox uh, Ubuntu OSK, and it's 64-bit. Now, as I mentioned, we had to worry about resource size, so we'll at least get it past, we'll get up to 4K, or 4 megabytes. And we're going to create the virtual hard disk now. This is fine, the disk image. And it's going to be dynamically allocated. We're using all the defaults here, and if you recall, it was... 25 gigabytes, so 29, that's good enough for demo purposes. And now we've created it. So our new Ubuntu OSK is powered off. We're going to double click it to start it for the first time. And now we're going to need to supply it a uh, our Ubuntu disk image. So I've moved that. Um, That's an old one I had lying around. So I've moved from the download, I've put our 18.04 into a, this virtual machine folder. I choose this. And now we can start it. We've now gotten to uh, an installation page and it says English and I'm gonna select install Ubuntu. continue I'm going to do a normal installation the 
It's okay to erase the disk and install Ubuntu because we are doing this in a virtual machine. Now we're ready to name our machine. So I will be Grandpa Dave. Our username is Grandpa Dave, and I'm going to put OSK lowercase for our password. And now it's the starting the installation. The Ubuntu installation is complete, so now we need to restart our computer. Ubuntu is finished re rebooting, and now I see my account, Grandpa Dave. So I'm going to enter my um, password, OSK. And as you can notice, the screen size looks small. So once this goes into Ubuntu, I'm going to um, change the display setting. To change the display setting, I'm going to go to the upper left and click settings. I'm going to pull this to make it small so that way I won't lose the focus. Sometimes the setting screen might get too big that I won't be able to um, fix it. So I want to change the resolution. I'm going to go to what's close to my PC and there's the apply button, which was would have been off screen. I didn't move. And let's keep the changes. And now we see we have a, a big screen that fits my PC. So we can close that. Now we want to open a terminal window. I just right clicked and can open terminal. You can also do this um, using Control Alternate T. We also want to start up the Mozilla Firefox browser because we want to get to the OpenSAT Kit Wiki page. We scroll down to the installation section and we cut the line or copy. <laughs> the installation line, we come back to our terminal and I'll make this wide. Then we can paste it and start our OpenSAT installation. This is just asking us if we want to do the installation. And at this point, this could take a little while. It's, it's uh, downloading the master tar file from GitHub. Okay, the download's complete. Now it's prompting us for the Cosmos installation, which we say yes. And we need the elevated privilege password. It's now prompting us whether we want to install Ruby using the Ruby environment, and we want to say yes to that. The Cosmos installation is complete, and now we're being prompted whether we want to install and run a demo of Cosmos, and we can hit no to that. And now we're about to install some more dependencies, and again, we have to give our password. The installation is complete and now we're being prompted to close this terminal and then reopen a new one and then go to the Cosmos directory and run Ruby Launcher. The closing of this terminal, it has to do with the, uh, the reinstalling of the Ruby environment variables. So we can open a new terminal. It will take us to a new home directory. And if we do a CD to open our kit master cosmos and we can do a ruby launcher remember the capital l oh right and this just reminded me um i'm still not sure why this happens the bundle install was done in the installation script but it needs to be repeated again and that's a bug that still needs to be worked out Now we can do the Ruby launcher. Cosmos has been launched. We get our launcher window and there is the button with the CFS OpenSAT kit. We can launch that. And it looks like everything is launching correctly. And I always like to do uh, In a, 
a little test. Um, so here was the command of telemetry server, telemetry viewer, so we could start the CFS. And again, we open a password, enter it there for Grandpa Dave, it's OSK. And that's a good sign. Looks like our apps are being initialized. There's also an integration script that can be run. And it's kind of a nice introduction if it's their first time to this kit. So what this does is basically it starts Cosmos script, script Runner. It brings up two pages that list all the apps that are pre-installed. And this script is going to go through and send a no-op command, which just essentially bumps the command valid count. And then it verifies that it actually incremented in telemetry. And then it goes through all the apps and makes sure they're all properly installed. As you can see, health and safety is not currently always installed. I've had some trouble with it on certain Ubuntu releases, and that's another bug that needs to be fixed. All right, well, this concludes our video, and thank you very much for tuning in.